Thank you very much. As you come over to us, the last three now set to vote. General challenge, one from the outside, moves into the gate calmly. Capsized as in. Charismatic, gates closed. They're all set for the Santa Anita Derby. And oh, where they go. Desert Hero left in the air a little, but he was out fast in the green cab. And Desert Hero is going off to lead them early. High Wire Act, though, keen to take the lead as he pulls his way to the lead. The Philly Honest Lady right there at the rail. Now here comes General Challenge moving smartly up to race in the second spot. Charismatic has no alternative but to go a little wide. Then comes Walk That Walk. Prime Timber down at the rail as five lengths off these leaders. And Charismatic is last of a bunch field. Past the seven eights they go, and Chris McCarran has high wire rack, leading them at a sensible pace. They're not flying, but not crawling either. The Philly Honest Lady at the rail. Outside of her is General Challenge, now taking the second spot. Here's Desert Hero in fourth. He's only two and a half lengths off those leaders. Then comes Prime Timber on the inside of Charismatic. Capsized as second last, six lengths off the leaders. And the long shot, Walk That Walk, is last. They head to the half mile in the Santa Anita Derby and it's High Wire Act taking them along, joined now by General Challenge and General Challenge kicking on for home now. Desert Heroes right there, third and Honest Lady asks for a little bit of run down at the rail in fourth. Prime Timber is fifth, got five lengths to make up, then Charismatic capsized and walk that walk. They come into the quarter pole now, and it's General Challenge taking over. General Challenge, Desert Hero out after him, but General Challenge full of run on the lead. And General Challenge telling them, you're going to have to pick up your feet, you want to catch me. Prime Timber in the centre of the track takes up that challenge, and here comes Prime Timber to take him on. Past the eight pole they come. General Challenge in full flight for the wire. He's clear by four lengths. And it's going to be General Challenge, a most impressive winner of the Santa Anita Derby. General Challenge from Prime Timber Desert. His honest lady was second last. And high wire. And our unofficial winner, General Challenge, with Gary Stevens aboard. Stevens' fifth Santa Anita Derby victory in the last seven years. And Bob Baffert unofficially finishing 1-2 with Prime Timber finishing second. This is really an interesting development here because, of course, this is the horse, far turn, and as they head into the stretch, he is right here in front on a lonely lead, and he's going to draw off to an impressive victory over his stablemate, Prime Timber. Honest lady, I thought they might go for the lead with her today. They selected to take her back. She's just obviously not of this quality and couldn't handle these horses. General challenge romping away here to the victory under Gary Stevens, who is Mr. Santa Anita Derby, and they are headed to the Kentucky Derby. A California bred wins the Santa Anita Derby yet again. General challenge with Gary Stevens. Parade. Number one algebra was scratched. The stable mate has won a worldly manner. Ships in from Dubai with the Hall of Fame jockey Jerry Bailey. Number two is excellent meeting. The Philly Kent DeSormo won the race last year, and his entry mate, also owned by John and Betty Maybe, General Challenge, the California bred gelding with Gary Stevens, a three time winner in the saddle. Number three, in from New York, where he won the wood very impressively, Adonis, one of the two Nick Zito horses. Number four has been pointed for this race for weeks. Three ring, the filly who has not run in six and a half weeks, John Velasquez in the irons. Number five right now is the favorite, amazingly enough, despite four lifetime starts at nine to two. Stephen got even with Chris McCarron, has won this race twice. Desert Hero, who's raced only three times, is number six, the Hall of Fame trainer, Richard Mandela. Number seven is the two-year-old champion, Answer Lively. Bobby Barnett is the conditioner. Craig Perrette won this race in 1990. Cat Thief is number eight. One of the Wayne Lucas horses right now, seven to one. William T. Young is the owner. Mike Smith trying to get off the schneid. He's 0 for 8 in the Derby. And this Prime Timber. Prime Timber is six to one. One of the Baffert horses, David Flores, really coming into his own. He's a great jock, just won the Santa Anita riding title. First American is number 10, coming in off his victory in the Flamingo. Eddie De La Husse, the jockey, he's won this race twice in 82 and 83. Number 11, the other Lucas horse is Charismatic, owned by Bob and Beverly Lewis, who owns Silver Charm. Chris Antley won this race in 91 on Strike the Gold. He's the jockey. 
Number 12 is Vicker, the two time winner in Florida. Carl Nosker won this race in 90 with his only other derby entrant. Unbridled Shane Sellers tries to win his first derby. 13 is Menifee, named for a county in eastern Kentucky. Elliot Walden has two horses in the race. This is one of them. The great pack day is aboard, leading rider in the history of this track. And the other Walden horse is the first of the five field horses, Ecton Park. With Walden, the trainer, and Robbie Davis up for the first time. 15 is Val Hall, a horse we've talked a lot about, the controversial Arkansas Derby winner who's run only three times in his career with that one win in Arkansas. 16 is K1 King. Alex Solis is the jockey. Akiko Gothard is the 68-year-old trainer. Akiko Gothard, we talked about her before. This horse has won four of seven starts. Number 17 is Kimberlite Pipe, who was fourth in the Bluegrass, but comes here after winning the Louisiana Derby. Prior to that, Robbie Alvarado in the Irons and rounding out the field, the last of the five field horses. That's Lemon Drop Kid with the veteran conditioner Scotty Schulhofer. His last outing, fifth in the Bluegrass. So a field of 19. There they are. It is an unbelievable sight. Hey, Santos teaming up again, hoping for their first Kentucky Derby. All in line. in the Kentucky Derby. Charismatic gets away quickly and Answer Lively shows speed toward the inside. Cat Thief with the white blinkers and Worldly Manor is up front, passing us for the first time. Now Val Hall shoots through and Val Hall takes command. On the outside, it's Cat Thief second. On the inside, it's Answer Lively third. Here comes Stephen Got Even in red moving up fourth. Desert Hero is fifth. Worldly Manor on the outside sixth, and it's a traffic jam at the first turn. Three ring on the inside, finds room and gains ground. The filly moves up. Charismatic drops back. Back on the front end. Val Hall leads it by three parts of a lake. That's Cat Thief in second. Worldly Manor in blue on the outside moves third. Stephen Got Even is fourth. At the rail, Answer Lively is fifth. Desert Hero sixth. Charismatic seventh. Kimberlite Pipe is eighth. On the inside, the Philly, that's three ring racing, ninth, middle of the racetrack. Vicker is 10th at this point. First American shoots through on the inside, then Prime Timber, then Adonis at the rail. Ecton Park followed by Menifee. Then the Baffert horses are fourth and third last. General Challenge and the Philly, excellent meeting. Lemon Drop Kid is 18th at this point. And K1 King. They're midway on the turn. And moving through on the inside, Cat Thief with the white blinkers has the lead. And here comes Worldly Manor, trained in Dubai, up to challenge. And Worldly Manor puts a head in front. It's Worldly Manor on the outside. Cat Thief at the rail. And Charismatic is coming on strongly. Down the stretch they come. Cat Thief digging in at the rail. Worldly Manor with Jerry Bailey. Charismatic trained by Lucas on the outside. Now Lucas running one, two. Charismatic on the outside. Takes command on the inside. Cat Thief in the middle of the track. Benefee is flying, but it's Charismatic holding on to win it by a hand. Benefee flying on the outside. And Cat Thief, I believe, was third. And there is Charismatic win in 15 career starts and Hank will pick it up on the turn for home. He's in good shape right here. On he the is. Outside. You see Cat Thief, Lucas's other horse, had the lead and Worldly Manor really looked like he was going to threaten. And I really think that Worldly Manor finally got that to that last quarter of a mile and that last quarter of a mile gets you and it got to him and they'll be questioning themselves in Dubai about seasoning for the Kentucky Derby. But what a magnificent closing finish by charismatic Menifee. The post had to hurt him but he makes a magnificent run and just misses. And when you think of Menifee, you think of Elliot Walden, and it's super slow-mo now as the Lucas horses have Worldly Manor in a sandwich at that point, and then Charismatic gets to the finish line first, fending off Menifee, who'll come in on the outside. Charismatic, a horse, if you had been at Hollywood Park last November 21st, and you had $62,500. You could have claimed charismatic. I guess I should have been there. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Coulda, shoulda, woulda. Chris Antley, by the way, was off for 18 months, uh, and he had weight problems, Al, and he just recently returned to riding, and 
and you just really have to take your hat off to him. You do. That's the way through the shadows out in front of the main stands ready for the post parade for the 124th running of the Preakness each of the horses carrying 126 apart from the Philly who gets a five pound weight allowance she carries 121 number one the outsider Torrid Sand Tim Ducey is the jockey Randy Morse is the trainer neither of those fellas have ever participated in a triple crown race Kimberlite Pipe is number two Shane Sellers gets the mount in this race he comes off Vicker for the mount Dallas Stewart a longtime Wayne Lucas assistant is the trainer sixth in the Kentucky Derby the Derby third cat thief two wins in 12 starts but 11 times in the money Mike Smith up Wayne Lucas the conditioner number four is badge Joe Aquilino is the trainer and former New York City fireman Mike Luzzi is the jockey this horse has never run a single race outside of Aqueduct Racetrack all eight of them there number five is Menifee the two to one favorite Pat Day seeking his sixth Preakness win Elliot Walden the conditioner only his seventh career start four wins two seconds charismatic is the Kentucky Derby winner charismatic with 15 career starts four wins Antley is the jockey Lucas is the trainer Number seven is excellent meeting. The only Philly, Kent DeSormo, won the race aboard Real Quiet last year. Bob Baffert Hi, is Sonia. the trainer. $1,193,000 in earnings for the Philly. Number eight is patience game, and they've been very patient with this horse. Didn't run as a two-year-old, has been to the track just four times with two wins in two seconds. Corey Nakatani in the saddle. Alex Hassinger is the conditioner. Number nine is Adonis. We talked about Chavez before and Jorge's great maneuver to avoid the fan on the track Nick Zito is the trainer this horse with three wins and seven starts worldly manner bred in Kentucky owned by John and Betty maybe sold for five million dollars to the shake and company trains in Dubai Jerry Bailey rides he's a Hall of Famer only a sixth career start number 11 is Stephen got even again with McCarran hurt this week Gary Stevens gets them out Nick Zito is the trainer just his sixth career start 14th in the Kentucky Derby the celebrated Arkansas Derby winner whose purse money is still in question Val Hall the hearings continue but for the moment he's in the field number 12 Val Hall with Edgar Prado a local star in the irons Dallas Keene is the trainer 13 is Vicker who was in then he was out then he was back in as of this morning Carl Nosker trains and Robbie Alvarado is the jockey and number 14 of course would have been silver bullet day who was scratched and won the black eyed Susan yesterday let's go now to a Maryland homebred himself Mr. Jim McKay go Chris one up Vicker Easy. moves into line Easy. Go. all set yeah. Preakness. Joint the inside. Cat Thief going for the lead. Vicker out in the middle of the racetrack showing early speed. Adonis is right there and Kimberlite Pipe at the rail. Passing us for the first time. Kimberlite Pipe at the inside. Cat Thief between horses. Vicker on the far outside charging up along with Val Hall who's behind horses in fourth. And Torrid Sand on the inside saves ground in fifth. Now around the turn. Three of them battle for the lead. Kimberlite Pipe at the rail. Cat Thief between horses and Vicker on the outside and those three are noses apart. It's a gap of five lengths and on the inside Torrid Sand is next. Val Hall between horses. There goes Worldly Manor in the all blue colors on the outside taking fourth position. Val Hall fifth. Torrid Sand is sixth. Adonis is seventh. Menifee is eighth. Stephen got even his ninth charismatic the derby winner 10th on the outside then comes badge patience game and the Philly excellent meeting is 13th and last down the back stretch after a half and a quick 45 and one fifth seconds Kimber light Pike leads it by ahead and cat thief now charges up cat thief on the outside to the front with Mike Smith. Kimberlite Pipe at the inside is second. And then comes Vicker, who's racing third. And Charismatic is making his move. Chris Antley takes Charismatic. He's fourth. He's third in the green cap on the outside as they move to the top of the stretch. Cat Thief with the white blinkers in front. And here comes Charismatic rolling up and taking command at the top of the lane in the Preakness. Far out on the outside of the track. It's Charismatic. And down the stretch they come in the Preakness. And Charismatic has the lead. Menifee with a late move into the second 
spot. Stephen got even advantage in deep, deep stretch. It's charismatic and Chris Hadley, a possibility for a triple crown. Charismatic, the Derby winner, wins the Preakness. Badge on. Triple crown. Charismatic for the third year in a row sends everybody to Belmont Park with the possibility of a triple crown winner, something that hasn't happened since a firm pulled the trick in 1978. But Charismatic, who had no respect at all after the Santa Anita Derby, was 31 to 1 in the Kentucky Derby, goes off here at odds of 8 to 1 to win the Preakness and does it very impressively as Antley Preakness in 1980. Now we're going to take a look at Charismatic green silks, yellow stripes on the outside as number six Chris Antley starts to move to the outside. Wide open right there. Goes by the eight horse and is clear sailing from that spot on. Al, how good was he today? This was an area of the racetrack you just did not want to be in for the last two days here, and yet he makes that huge run down the middle. He was much the best. And it was clear at this point, with an eighth of a mile to go, that we were looking at a triple crown possibility. And of all things, from a horse who twice, two times in the past seven months, was available to anybody in a claiming race. $62,500 was the tag. We could have swung that. Yes, we certainly could have. And that, of course, in this horse, despite the fact, and admitted, he made a mistake running him for a, running him for a claiming tag. He did. Wayne said, in effect, he said, it's my worst managing job and maybe my best training job. And Wayne Lucas, who, who along with Bob Baffert, has shared horses with the Lewises. The Lewises, again, going into the winner's circle. Bob and Beverly Lewis, don't, they don't take horses away from either trainer. There have been some stories to that effect. What they do is they try to divvy them up. They have great relations. Would have been the favorite for the Kentucky Derby before he was hurt. And exploit was in Bob Baffert's barn. In fact, Bob Baffert had seven uh, triple crown possibilities. He was left with a Philly excellent meeting today and, and a sad ending for her today. Chris. And before this record crowd, here's the field, the post parade, teletable. Owned by Robert Perez, a guy who loves to enter long shots in classic races. This horse, a rank outsider. Number two is Vision in Verse, trained by the Hall of Famer Bill Mott, won the Illinois Derby on the 8th of May. Number three is the Philly Silver Bullet Day, the Hall of Fame jockey Jerry Bailey, who rode this horse once before to a win at the Ashland Stakes at Keeneland, won the Black Eyed Susan last out. Charismatic, 31 to 1 in the Derby, 8 to 1 in the Preakness. Will he win the Triple Crown today? He's 3-2. to two. Number five is Pineff. Pineff, his last win came in the Tampa Bay Derby where he beat Menifee in March. Number six is Lemon Drop Kid. Scotty Schulhofer is the trainer. Won this race in 93 with Colonial Affair. Number seven is Patience Game. Kent DeSormo is a very rough trip in the Preakness. Only his sixth start ever. Lightly raced. Number eight is Adonis. One of the two Nick Zito horses, Adonis, with three wins in eight outings, apart from that, off the board in every other race. Number nine is the rank outsider, prime directive, but he does get the services of Mike Smith in the saddle. Smith is a guy who has won five Belmont riding titles. This is a Florida bred. Number 10, Pat Day up on Menifee, trained by Elliot Walden. Seven starts in his career, four wins, three seconds. He's won almost a million bucks. 11 is Stephen got even, the second of the Zito horses. He was 14th in the Kentucky Derby. He was fourth in the Preakness. Shane Sellers aboard. And best of luck with Alan Jerkins, the giant killer, a guy who has trained horses who've beaten the likes of... Still got one out. Got one out. That one is best of luck. He's in line. We're ready for the start. gets away cleanly as they run to the first turn. Menifee surprisingly on the outside, along with Stephen Gotti even showing early speed, Charismatic and the Philly, Silver Bullet Day at the rail. They're at the clubhouse turn, and it's Silver Bullet Day with the red cap leading it, and the derby winner on the outside, it's Charismatic now putting ahead in front. It's the lady and the champ up front. Charismatic on the outside, and Silver Bullet Day races in the second spot. 
On the outside with the red color, Stephen got even, is in third position. Moving through on the inside, that's Vision and First. As they race down the back stretch, the first quarter was in 23 and 3. They straighten away for the run down the back stretch. And it's Silver Bullet Day on the inside, in front by ahead. Charismatic going for the triple crown a second. And Stephen got even, inching up on the outside third. Prime Directive with the Red Blinkers is fourth. And along the inside, Vision and Verse is fifth at this point. Then comes Menifee, who has been shuffled back into sixth position. Lemon Drop Kid is next. After that, it's Patience Game. Teletable, two and a half back to Adonis. And far back, it's Best of Luck. And far, far back, and having lost touch with the field, Pinet. They go to the far turn. And Silver Bullet Day leads it by half a length easily. Jerry Bailey aboard. Charismatic is second. And on the outside, Steven got even. And just behind those in the black cap, Vision and Verse saving ground on the inside as they reach the midway point on the turn. Adonis is fifth at this point. Lemon Drop Kid is sixth. Menifee is seventh as they move to the top of the stretch. It's the Philly Silver Bullet Day on the rail in front. Between horses, Charismatic trying for the triple crown. On the outside, Steven got even. Adonis, and here on the extreme outside comes Lemon Drop Kid. At the rail, in the white blinkers, vision and verse. Now five of them, and Charismatic takes the lead. Charismatic between horses, but on the outside, there goes Lemon Drop Kid just rushing to contention. Lemon Drop Kid, and on the inside, vision and verse. Lemon Drop Kid on the outside, vision and verse. Charismatic is beaten. Here's the finish. It's going to be tight. Lemon Drop Kid, I believe, held on to win it by a head. Trained by Scotty Schulhofer. Ridden by Jose Santos on the inside. Vision and verse. It's a photo finish. Alberto Castillo Jr. finishing just behind Wayne Lucas, the trainer. And it is just the worst conceivable ending to see that shot. Of course, the race was a a terrific race, won by 29 to 1, and Bob and Beverly Lewis uh, perhaps even unaware at this point as to the problem with Charismatic, who was pulled up about 150 yards past the starting line, who rallied so gamely and so valiantly, who looked at one point in mid-stretch as if he had a very good chance to win this race. And then as he overtook Silver Bullet Day out of nowhere, out of the clouds, as they say, in the vernacular of racing, Lemon Drop Kids, Scotty Schulhofer, is the trainer. When Schulhofer won this race with Colonial Affair in 1993, Prairie Bayou also broke down, and that put a big damper on that, and Julie Crone rode that horse to the winner's circle, Colonial Affair, and now we have a situation today where Scotty will exultantly go to the winner's circle, but yet everybody concerned right now about Charismatic and his condition getting all of the attention, Hank. Scotty Schulhofer always believed in this horse. Not a lot of people listened, and then you had Bill Mott's 55 to one shot running second. Here's the isolation on uh, the isolated shot as we'll see what happens with Charismatic, as you said, Al, takes the lead in mid-stretch. She ran, he ran a, a little bit quickly early, but Lemon Drop Kid goes right by her without too much difficulty, and it doesn't look like Charismatic is struggling particularly at this point. And Charismatic is able to get to the finish line, but then Antley will know right there very shortly as you have Vision in verse number two and Lemon Drop Kid coming across. And, uh, but uh, the, the, the primary concern at this point is that the horse is, uh, uh, I haven't been able to, uh, whatever the circumstance is, we'll deal with it. Thank you for your graciousness, Bob. Back to you, Al. Okay, thank you, Leslie. And, of course, we'll monitor this situation very closely. I'm going to be joined in a moment by Larry Bramlage, who is our uh, veterinarian that we have with us on our telecasts in each of the... Uh, the races that we do on ABC. Now, Larry, do you know anything at this point, or can you tell anything from what you see on camera? Well, the veterinarians down on the uh, track have reported that it looks like he cracked a bone in his ankle. It's very much like when a person turns their ankle to the side during a performance, and 
Uh, they put a splint on him, and he's handling it really well, but it, of course, takes radiographs for us to tell for sure. But that's the preliminary diagnosis, that, that he's injured his ankle. People want to know, of course, with a horse, uh, sometimes something that looks so not seeing until uh, they were able to look back several moments later that there was a problem with the horse. Lemon Drop Kid, we mentioned, owned by Gene Vance, her husband, Laddie Dance. They opened a head and neck cancer center in Baltimore 20 years ago. They, like the Lewises, have spent a lot of money with charities, have given away millions of dollars, the kind of people who give. From the reverse angle now, let's take another look here from the gyro cam. Hank? Oh, you're going to see a very gallant effort by Charismatic. You know, he just never gave up until he crossed the wire. One word on Jose Santos. His seven, he's been in 17 triple crown races without having a winner. So a big day for him. But you just hope that if Charismatic is OK, because he showed so much courage today in defeat. Wayne Lucas has had his critics through the years, and they will be out in force tomorrow, telling you that Wayne runs his horses into the ground. It comes with the territory. It's something you'll see in the papers. But in all fairness, it happens to a lot of trainers. And at what point do you say, I don't have a sound horse? He has to think his horse is sound, and the horse performs soundly until the very, very end. And he was thriving on the activity. Here is the AT&T winning moment. As by a neck, it is Lemon Drop Kid winning the Belmont, the final leg of the Visa Triple Crown Series. We'll continue after this message and a word from our ABC station. Galleryfurniture.com sponsoring the gyro cam, which uh, was effectively used during our coverage of the Belmont Stakes today. I look down at Belmont Park where a good part of this huge crowd of more than 83,000 begins to file out. The aerial facilities provided by